muse. It is Mr. Me, the person that you frequently tap on the shoulder and say, Psst, I have an idea for another story. You want this one, don't you? I have a question for you today. Une question. And maybe it's not so much for you, but for my fellow writers. By way of you, of course, by way of our discussion, because that's what we're doing. We're having a discussion, a little tete-a-tete. -tete. The question that I want to pose is this. Who are you writing for? Yeah, it's one of those questions. Now, this thought came to me last night when I was working on the draft of Defying Gravity. I'm almost done with it, and I am so thrilled. Well, it dawned on me that writing this book has been an absolutely fantastic distraction for me from, dare I say it, this pandemic. The reason why it's been such a good distraction for me is that it holds a very special place in my heart because, and I've already talked to you about this muse, it comes from a place of truth. It happened, sort of, to me. This book happened to me, again, sort of. And as I was pondering this last night, I started thinking, who am I writing this for? Am I writing this for a niche audience? Because truth be told, that could be, could being the operative word, could be the target for this book. Why? Well, that's pretty simple because the book centers around an actor in a theatrical production. So it's pretty obvious to, to grasp that the primary audience for this book might be those who have experienced a theatrical production, be it an actor, a director, a designer, a backstage person, choreographer, music director. Those are the people that will have this immediate connection to the book. Of course, there's also romance involved, and then there's also the magical realism that I've layered on top of this, which seems to be getting thicker and thicker as the book goes along. And I'm about ready to finish it, and uh, I, all of a sudden, the climax of this book really depends upon this bit of magical realism, but that's beside the point. So, it occurred to me last night that Maybe, just maybe, I'm not even writing this book for those people. Maybe I'm writing this book for me. And I had, that, that idea gave me pause. Because clearly, <laughs> I am only one person. I am an audience of one. And if you really think about it, no writer in their right mind would want to write a book just for themselves. Yes, we do this because we can't, we can't not do it, and we do it for the joy of it. But when push comes to shove, we still have to put food on the table. We still have to keep the lights on. And so the idea of just writing a book for yourself seems well, kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But the truth of the matter is, and I think that there is a much deeper truth to this, is that although I strongly believe that every human being is very unique in who they are and what they are and why they do what they do, but I think that there are certain universals involved at play here. There has to be, 
Otherwise, if there, if there weren't universals, there wouldn't be stereotypes. And we all know that there are stereotypes. So if we do take into consideration the idea of universals, then the idea of writing for myself actually means that I'm writing for people like me. And I know that there are a lot of people out there like me. There are so many people out there like me because there are so many people who are involved with theater. It all comes back to that. But as a writer, it takes on a whole different meaning, meaning to write for oneself. We all write for various reasons. For some people, it's ego. For some people, it's strictly a business transaction. And for some, like me, it's about art. I know I've droned on about this constantly. But the act of creating for me is kind of a cycle because I need to create art. And the act of creating art fulfills that need and makes me want to continue creating art. So every so often, and I, there are other books that I've written that have served this purpose. Every so often, I have to step back and write something for myself. It sounds a little selfish. It sounds maybe not greedy, but it, it sounds a little self-serving because it is self-serving. Every once in a while, I just have to do something for myself. Most of the time, what I'm writing is for an audience. Like fear, for example. Fear took me back to that post-apocalyptic audience that I served for a very long time. I know those people. I know those people very well because I wrote a lot of books. I wrote at least 13 books in that genre. So I know them well. They know me. That's why this, as soon as Fear was released, people started picking it up and started getting reviews, whereas Hopetown is still kind of struggling to gain any traction. Hopetown was another book that I wrote for myself. I wrote POTUS was another book. I wrote POTUS because I needed the catharsis that it came, that came along with it. The whole Shiro series. At first, the Shiro series wasn't written for myself. It was written for to honor a certain cross-section of people. But eventually, Shiro became something I wrote for myself when I had written so many deep and dark and hard books like Hell's Muse and all of those. I would have to go, I, ah. I need to lighten up a little bit. So I would write hell, I would write Shiro and I would laugh. I would have fun. And it would remind me that writing can also be joyful. And so with defying gravity, I felt a need, a very, very strong need to bridge two worlds of mine the writing world and the acting world. And, and part of that was, you. everybody knows the adage, write what you know. Of course, we also know how I feel about that. But at the same time, every so often, when you do dive in and write something you know, it's not only incredibly easy to write, it's also very fulfilling. And Defying Gravity has been, I cannot even begin to tell you how fulfilling it's been. Because not only was, does it allow me to revisit a very precious time in my life, it's also allowing me to share that time in my life with people that weren't able to experience it. And also, it's allowing me to share a part of an aspect of my creativity that I don't share with other people. I don't share my acting process with a lot of people. I, there were things that happened during Cabaret that I didn't share with anybody. And I'm sharing that with them now. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because you're just going to have to read the book. 
But I knew going into this book that I was writing it for myself. I also knew that I needed to do that. So I think the lesson to be learned here is before you begin writing anything, you should ask yourself, who am I writing for? And if that, if the answer to that is a specific audience, that's great. If that is the answer to that question is a specific type of person, that's great. But if that, and if the answer to that question is yourself, that's fine. Especially if you know it is exactly what you need at that moment. Now, I know it might sound a little crazy, but you have to understand that a big part of who I am as an artist is someone who listens, who listens to the universe and listens to the internal workings of who I am. My mind and my heart and my body are frequently telling me what I need to know to continue to move forward. And if I listen to that, then I continue to be a healthy person, healthy in both body and mind and spirit and soul and emotion. If I ignore that, then I run the risk of losing that health. And to me, that is really important as an artist. It is something that is so often overlooked and very rarely talked about. The mental and emotional health of an artist is something that cannot be denied and cannot be overlooked. And every so often, the only way to regain that mental and emotional and spiritual and social health is to do something for yourself. If that means writing a one-person show and performing it for an audience of two or three people, then do it. If that means taking a huge chance and auditioning for something that you don't think that you had have a chance in hell at getting, do it. If that means writing a book that you know that your heart and mind needs to write simply to return to you, then do it. The universe is always telling us what we need to hear. And we are constantly turning our backs on it. And the more you listen to it, the better you'll be as a person, as an artist. And so, as I'm finishing up Defying Gravity, I am pleased. I, 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 I don't know that I've ever been so pleased with a book. And, and maybe, just maybe, that comes from me just being able to experience this part of my life that I hold so very dear. And I hope, I hope that readers will get the same thing out of it. No, they didn't experience this, but they will have experienced something similar and they can connect to it because, because universals, that's why any artist, it doesn't matter what medium you use, any artist will understand from this book the power of true and absolute connection to work. And by work, I mean artistic work. And so the truth of the matter is, is although I may be writing this book for myself, I'm writing this book for any artist that needs to reconnect to their art and remember the absolute joy that comes with creation.
It's an important question to ask. So ask it, and don't be afraid of the answer. Ever. Anyway, that's all I got today, Muse. Ah, I can't wait to get this finished, because I think after I finish this, I'll be going on to this next book in the Fear series, because people are gobbling it up and loving it. Anyway, thank you, Muse, for the inspiration that you give me. Thank you for keeping me mentally and emotionally sound, or as sound as I can be. And thank you, Muse, for just being awesome. Pshh!